Greetings, players. Today we have a battle report featuring the forces of House Nasir versus the deadly forces of House Garitsi. We've already deployed, and today we see Garitsi taking capture prisoner and Nasir taking escort civilians as their motivations. The Garitsi have deployed in two waves surrounding their commander, Nostrola Hestra, the Herald of Blood. Their front line consists of Zeti war dancers and Raven Scar mercenaries. The second line is composed of scores of skirmishers backed up with a scourge hound and a shield breaker. Nasir have divided into a left and right flank. The left flank is composed of a group of Ashmen with a Hakar, while their right side is a group of Ashmen with a Hakar and a blood child for support. The Garitsi starting morale is 6, and the Seer starting morale is 7. Round 1 sees the Seer winning initiative and beginning by moving their Ashmen up and sprinting up the left flank. Garitsi counters with his war dancers, moving up and sprinting forward to engage the advancing Ashman. The Ashman now advance up and position themselves in a gap in the wall. The Raven Scars move up and attempt to hold them at the bottleneck. The remaining Ashmen move up and continue to bolster their front lines. The Scourge Hound now moves to the center, supporting their forces. The Blood Child is immediately going toward his objective by sprinting and flying over the wall, looking to engage the enemy as quickly as possible. Ending the round, both armies are still at full morale. Turn 2, Garitsi wins initiative and chooses to activate their war dancers. The dancers move up and using Hestra's Inspire ability bunch up the Ashmen before making use of their deadly flourish. I managed to cut down 5 of the advancing Ashmen. The Ashmen make most of their attacks with Duelist, but still need 7 pluses to hit the Raven Scars. They manage to slay two Raven Scars before repositioning. Scourge Hound now looks to assist the Raven Scars by moving up and using its Bounding Flourish to attack three of the Ashmen. The Hound is looking for 7+, plus, rolling 2d10 against the Ashmen, but fails to do much, only killing off one. The Ashmen respond by moving and making a combined attack on the Hound. They're looking for 6 plus on their 4d10 and score 2 hits, which is enough to kill the Wolf. The 
The scores of skirmishers now work on cleaning up the flank. One looks to aid Hestra, inflicting one wound which kills the Ashman. The other skirmishers make an assisted attack, eliminating one other of the Ashman. The Bloodchild doesn't take this lightly, and moves toward the Greasy deployment zone to complete his objective at the end of the turn. Shieldbreaker moves forward into the group of Ashmen. Using the reach on his attack, he smashes one of the Ashmen with a roll of 5 and 8. The Ashmen refocus their attention toward the War Dancers now. They engage all three war dancers with the idea of killing them all, but the Hikar fails to slay both of his targets, leaving one on the field. Estra now activates and moves to attack the Hikar engaged with the war dancer. Her attack has four dice and will hit on a six plus. Dice are turned against her, and only one wound will be dealt to the Akar. The end of the round has Bloodchild scoring his objective, which reduces the Garitsi morale by two. That, combined with all the other deaths from the round, leave Garitsi at three morale and Nasir at four. The start of round three has Hester and the remaining war dancers doing a combined attack on the Hikar. which annihilates him before they move around the back of the wall to flank their enemy. The Ashmen move up to engage the Shield Breaker. One engaged with the Raven Scar goes for the easy kill and makes quick work of his enemy. The other two combine their attacks, giving them 3d10, since unfortunately the Hakar failed his check from Intimidating Presence. They only managed to put a single wound on the Shield Breaker. The Shield Breaker begins his activation with his Howl from Beyond, slaying an Ashman. He then kills the other with his attack, scoring a critical hit in the process, preventing a retaliation strike. The sole remaining Ashman on the flank manages to slay a skirmisher with his duelist skills before discovering the future is not looking very bright. The two remaining skirmishers move up to grab the captive and eliminate the Ashman. The attack easily dispatches him, opening up a clear path for them to claim their objective. Now that the Bloodchild has completed his objective, he looks to return to the fight and sets his eye on the Shieldbreaker. The end of round three has Garizia at three morale and Nasir at two. It's still anyone's game. Nasir wins the initiative roll and activates Bloodchild. Bloodchild passes the Intimidation check and uses his Smoldering Strike to deal four wounds to the Shield Breaker. Ouch. Greetsy now activates their Skirmishers. One engages Bloodchild and manages to put a wound on him, while the other falls back to claim their objective. The remaining Hakar rushes to intercept the objective capture. Estra now enters the fight against the Bloodchild. And using her War Dancers, manages to put 5d10 attack against him, taking him down. We now roll initiative 
and see Nasir win in activating their lone Hakkar. The Hakkar charges in and manages to slay the skirmisher with a critical hit. Dritzi has their eyes on objectives, however, and activates their other skirmisher, who manages to move forward and put their objective in an area it can be claimed. At the end of the round, having secured their objective, Dritzi manages to drop Nasir's morale to zero, winning them the game. We hope you have enjoyed this Wrath of Kings battle report, and join us next time as we'll have more clashes against more of the houses. Take care.